Oh God, we're on your side. Oh God, we're on your side. Let the enemies bow down. Oh God, we're on your side. Oh God, we're on your side. Oh God, we're on your side. The enemies will bow. Oh, come on. Oh, just worship him. Lift him up. No enemy can stop you. No enemy will block you. If you're on the Lord's side, the enemies will bow. No enemy can take you down. No enemy can take you down. If you are on the Lord's side, your enemies will bow. God has got you. God protects you. God will cover you. The enemies will bow. God will lift you. God will hold you. God will keep you. Yeah. The enemies will bow. We just gonna lift up our own worship. you want tell him what you need tell God what you want oh, oh, oh tell him what you need just send your worship send your own personal worship oh, no, no. send it up to God he hears you he hears you This is where it's about you, you and God. I don't want the rocks crying out for me. Let me send up my worship. I don't want the rocks crying out for me. No. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. In your presence there is joy. In your presence there is peace. In your presence there is love. In your presence there is freedom. In your presence there is joy. In your presence there is peace. In your presence there is love. In your presence, God, there's freedom. Freedom. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. Lift your worship. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. We've been through too much to let the rocks cry out for us. If you're on his side, he hears you. If it's on his side, he sees you. If you're on his side, he loves you. Oh, and your enemies will bow. If he's on his side, he hears you. If you're on his side, he sees you. If it's on his side, he covers you, yeah. The enemies will bow. The enemies. The enemies will bow. about us it's about him and you send up your worship oh send up your worship 
send up your worship. Sometimes we cry, oh, my Father, oh, what in heaven we come to worship you. Just cry out, my Lord and my Savior, I need you to save me. Just cry, provider, when you need something, and he'll provide for you. Come on. Just cry, mighty fortress, under your rock I need to hide. Just hide me. The enemies will bow. We lift our praise today, your enemies. I want to know who is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side? As we raise our shout today, the enemies. I want to know who is on the Lord's side, yes. Who is on the Lord's side, yes. Who is on the Lord's side, yes. The enemies will bow. Who is on the Lord's side, yes. Who is on the Lord's side, yeah? God, you read our hearts, our enemies. I want to know who is on the Lord's side. Who is on the Lord's side, yeah? Who is on the Lord's side, yeah? Who is on the Lord's side, yeah? Oh, God, you are so good. On the Lord's side, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? The enemies will bow. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? Just raise your voice, raise your voice, raise your voice. Come on, raise your voice. Open your mouth, say thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth, say God, you're worthy. Oh God, we lift our voice today. The enemies will bow. Hallelujah. on the Lord's side. We got to keep lifting our voice so that the enemy will know that we are on the Lord's side. And that, that we may become a living testimony. Oh, um, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord What we have waited for has come to pass. Oh, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we have waited See what the Lord has done. Let's say, see what He's, see what the Lord has done. Oh, why don't you stop and see what the Lord has done? What we have waited for has come to pass. Why don't you see what the Lord, the Lord has done? We're going to say that one more time. Join us and say, oh, 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 see what. Lift your voice and say, come taste and see. 
what God has done and I have seen what the Lord has done yes I've been waiting for it and he's brought it to you past I have seen what the Lord has done my eyes have seen my ears have heard and I have seen what What I've been waiting for has come to pass. Don't you see what the Lord has done? See what the Lord has done. Won't you see what he's done? Through danger, sickness, toils, and stand, we've cried, but he has heard. We'll see what some people have not seen, but one day you'll say, see what, see what he's done. What you are waiting on for restoration. Some people waiting to see what, why don't you see what the Lord has done. He's Jehovah Nisi. Oh, see what he has done. Oh, oh, see what. My eyes have seen you, God. It will be a testimony. What we waited for has come. Just take the moment. To see what he will do for you, yeah, yeah. Some people are hurting. Some people are crying. Wipe away your tears. God has heard you. Yes. See what? Some people are Yes. But keep waiting. Some people are praying for family members some people are praying for a job oh you keep waiting god hears you god heard you god heard you some people are sick in their bodies but god can heal you i believe he can heal See what he has done, what you've been waiting for. People need a touch from the Spirit for their minds, for their hearts, for their souls. What we've been waiting for, it's going to come. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hey, oh, see what? Just lift it up right here to God. Eh? Say, God, I haven't seen you done it yet. But like the lady with 12 years, she reached out and touched him to see what the Lord had done. Whoa, see what. Has come 
to pass, see what the Lord has done. Why don't you see what the Lord, oh, keep hope alive and keep hope alive. What you've been waiting for has come to pass, see what Sometimes you need to see it through the eyes of faith. It's not here yet, but it's on its way. See what the Lord has done, what you've been waiting for. Don't be hard to the Spirit, He is working. See what the Lord has done. for all the things that he has done for you. Give him thanks for his mercy and his goodness. The Bible says the Lord is good and his mercies endure forevermore. Just bless the name of the Lord this morning. Give him thanks for his faithfulness towards you. The Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with us. Jesus said be of good cheer. I have overcome the world for your sake. Give him thanks for the healing that he has the deliverance, the direction. Oh, just bless the name of the Lord. We just worship you this morning, oh God. We give you thanks for all that you have done. You are good and your mercies endure forevermore. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We give you thanks for your mercy, Lord. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Oh, we worship you, mighty God. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Amen and amen. You are welcome to our service this morning. You are welcome to the Covenant Nation NYC. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you thanks for the gathering of your people. We are gathered unto you in the name of Jesus to bring glory unto your holy name. As we go into your word this morning, O oh God, open our hearts to receive your word, open our eyes to behold you, open our ears to hear your voice. Lord, I pray for the entrance of your word into our hearts and into our minds this morning. Let your light be manifested in our hearts. Cause me to speak as your oracle, not in enticing words of man's wisdom, but rather in the demonstration of your spirit and your power. Enable me to minister with the ability that only you can supply. We worship and we adore you, O oh God. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't say praise, but I said praise the Lord. Amen. So any opportunity that we have to praise God, we need to do it with a joyful shout. Hallelujah. We shouldn't do it, we shouldn't offer praise reluctantly, you know. It should be a spontaneous response when we magnify God. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says, God delights in the praises of his people. When we praise him, it brings him delight. It brings him joy. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to be sharing on what I've titled, uh, Pursuing the Glory of God. And I want to put it to us today that this is the mandate that God has given unto the church, to pursue 
and to thereby manifest the glory of God. Amen. We need to make the glory of God our one desire, our aim, our purpose, that which we are actively chasing after so we can manifest God's glory. Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2 says, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. That is, I have come into your house uh, to see, to behold uh, your power and your glory. It says, I am seeking you early. My whole flesh uh, is crying out for you to abide in your presence, uh, to be saturated, consumed uh, with your presence. David puts it this way in Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord. He didn't say many things, just one thing. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord or in his sanctuary all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. It says, I am coming so that I can behold the beauty of the Lord. And if you study the scripture, you will discover this beauty of the Lord is talking about the glory of the Lord. It says, we all with unveiled face, uh, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Uh, why do we want to behold him? So we can be transformed uh, into the same image. From glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Isaiah, when he saw the glory of God, uh, he says, in the, day of, in the days of King Uzziah, when King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord seated upon the throne, high and lifted up. And there were seven seraphim that began to proclaim uh, in Isaiah chapter, or we can start from verse 2. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, uh, with two he covered his face, uh, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Verse 3, and one cried unto another and said, uh, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Why did they say that? He says, because the whole earth is full of his glory. When we are beholding the beauty of the Lord or the beauty of his holiness, what we are actually beholding is the glory of God. The majesty of God. That is, that word holy is not talking about without sin. It's talking about being separate, being unique, being the only one. Hallelujah. So they cried out, holy, holy. Holy, they were declaring the beauty of his holiness. Uh, and they said, this is what it is. The whole earth uh, is full of his glory. And that's what um, um, David said, I want to behold your beauty. I want to behold your glory. I want to behold your power so that I can be changed, transformed into the same image. From glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. And so we have this divine mandate to make God's glory our pursuit, our one desire. Last week I shared uh, when Jesus, when Lazarus was uh, dead, and he, he came four days after he had been dead, uh, and Martha said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would have died. He, she could have said, Jesus, why are you late in coming? If you had come when we sent for you, my brother would not have died. Mary said the same thing. But Jesus' response to her was, look, if you believe, did I not say unto you that if you believe, uh, you would see the glory of God? If you believe, uh, you shall see the glory of God. That is, your brother who has died uh, will live again. Uh, why? Because the glory of God, uh, you are going to see it. You are going to experience uh, the glory of God. Hallelujah. 
says, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. In spite of the fact that he has been dead for four days. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Make the glory of God your focus. In that same chapter, when they came to Jesus and said his friend was sick, Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for what? The glory of God. That the glory of God will be revealed. That the glory of God will be made manifest. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Verse 2. Verse 3. I'm looking for verse 3. Okay, verse 4. says, this sickness is not unto death, uh, but for the glory of God. That the purpose of this situation is for the glory of God uh, to be revealed uh, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. That it should, when God's glory is made manifest, you yourself uh, will experience the same glory. Amen. You will be glorified, uh, you will be lifted up, uh, you will be, that is, God will attest uh, to his hand upon your life uh, because his glory has been made manifest. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Last week after I shared, someone I was watching online sent me this scripture. From verse 31, it says, and I just want you to understand and comprehend uh, how vital pursuing the glory of God is. It says, therefore, because there had been a debate about food offered to, uh, up to idols, whether you should eat it, whether you shouldn't eat it. And Paul came to this conclusion. He says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all unto the glory of God. That in whatever you are engaged in, make sure the purpose of your activity is for the glory of God. Which means if something as simple as eating and drinking is meant for you to focus on the glory of God, how much more every other thing we are engaged in. He says, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, and what are you doing today? Whatever occupation you find yourself, whatever activity you find yourself doing, make sure that you are doing all to the glory of God. Amen. Make sure that whatever you are doing is to the glory of God. Paul said here, he went on to say, Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but for the, the profit of many that they may be saved. He understood, look, I am not seeking what is going to benefit me. I am seeking what will benefit others. So his pursuit was for the glory of God. That they may be what? Saved. I'm not trying to benefit myself, not my will, but the will of God be done. I am pursuing the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Paul was laying down his life uh, so that the glory of God could be made manifest through him uh, so that those listening to him could be saved. Jesus came to manifest the glory of God uh, so that Lazarus could be raised from the dead uh, or Lazarus could be saved uh, from death. I'm not seeking my will. I am seeking uh, the glory of God. And in seeking the glory of God, it may mean that I might need to deny myself certain things. I am not seeking my own profit. I am not seeking my own will. I am seeking the will and the glory of God. Amen. 
Whatever you do, do for the glory of God. Whether that is your business, your business activity, your business dealings, make sure it is for the glory of God. Your marriage, make sure it is for the glory of God. I mean, some people will say, look, why do you want to get married? I'll use that as an example. Is it because all your friends are married? Or is it because ah, it is time for me to start having children? Or is it because I'm just feeling lonely and I need companionship? Said, so if that is your motive and your reason, you have missed it. Says, so whatever you do, make sure it is for God's glory to be revealed and manifested. I said this two weeks ago. When you make God's glory your pursuit, you will hear the voice of God. If you don't make God's glory your pursuit, you will hear the voice of a stranger. That is, in whatever you do, make sure it is for the glory of God. Even in raising kids, it must be for the glory of God. Why do you want to have kids? So that everyone knows that you can have kids. Or is it for the glory of God that there is a manifest, it changes your perspective. That this child was born for the glory of God. That this relationship came together for the glory, not my will, but for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Some people, the scripture says it here, Paul is saying that some people preach for gain. That they are not preaching for the glory of God. They are preaching so that you can know that they are eloquent. Or some people are using their talents so that you know that they are gifted, they are talented. That is, they are seeking what? Their own glory. Not the glory of God. Now, they are displaying, they've come to display skill so that you know they can do certain things or they have talent or they are utilized. In fact, Paul put it, they are peddling the word of God for profit. That is, they are exchanging God's word for money so that they can enrich themselves. That their purpose is not for the glory of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17 says, For we are not as so many peddling the word of God or peddling the gifts God has given us or the talent God has given us, but as of sincerity, as, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ Jesus. So we are not peddling the word of God. In fact, to one church, Paul said, I took nothing from you so that the word of God would not be hindered. That I took, that is, I worked with my own hands so that there would be no offense in my preaching the word of God. Because my aim is to manifest the glory of God unto you so that you can believe and be saved. The expanded Bible puts it this way, it says, we do not sell the word of God for a profit as many other people do, but in Christ we speak the truth in the presence of God as messengers from or envoys from God. That is, it would forego financial gain if it's going to hinder the manifestation of the glory of God. He would deny himself. Certainly, he says, all things are lawful, not all things are what? Expedient. That is, I would deny. He said, I have suffered the loss of all things for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. That is, I am ready to suffer loss. I am ready to put to death certain things in my life so that the glory of God can be manifested and so that you can benefit, profit, be saved. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus put it this way. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one 
and love the other, or else you will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and what? Mammon. You can't. You can't say you're pursuing the glory of God and you want your pocket. That is, God says, I know what you need before you ask. That all these things the world is chasing after says you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These things, when my glory is made manifest, will be added unto you. That don't pray like the world prays. They pray because of their needs. The reason we seek his face uh, is for the manifestation of his glory. Why? Because it brings about salvation unto others. It says, therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, uh, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Make sure that pursuit is for God's glory to be revealed. To be revealed in you and through you. That is the divine mandate. That whatever I do, I am doing so that the glory of God, not my glory. The Bible says don't, the rich man should not glory in his what? In his riches. The wise man should not glory in his what? In his wisdom. The strong man should not glory in his strength. That is, that's what the world does. They pursue those things so they can Don't you see how rich I am? Don't you know how many homes I own? Can you see how my business is thriving? Their focus is so that they can receive the praises of men or the glories that are coming from men, the adulation of men. They are not seeking the praise or the glory that comes from God. Why do you want to be the best? So that everybody can say, ah, you are the best. Or is it, is your purpose, that is, as you pursue the glory of God, you, you, you might become the best. But it is, that is not your motive. In the pursuit of the glory of God, you might end up being the best. But that is not your goal. Your goal is for the glory of God uh, to be revealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us, Numbers chapter 14. I shared this last week. And God was talking through Moses. God said, Numbers 14, verse 21, but truly as I was, this is God speaking. I want you to understand that. God is saying that truly, God is saying as I live. As I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. This is God speaking. That as I live, and God is eternal. Hallelujah. In him is eternal life. He said, as I live, as my life is made manifest, uh, what is going to happen uh, is all the earth uh, shall be filled uh, with the glory of the Lord. Uh, I put it to you that our life must manifest. Look, that is the reason we live uh, is for the, for the earth to be filled uh, with the glory of God. This is God's will. This is God's purpose. God says, uh, as I, the Lord has spoken. Bible says, who will be what? Prophesy. God has said, as I live. That is, I am committed to this. As I live. You know how you say something like, as long as I live, this is what is going to happen. Now, we know God cannot die. So he says, look, as I live and I am eternal. The earth, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. So I put it to you that we that have been created in the image and in the likeness of God, the purpose for our living is that his glory might fill the earth. God wants to use you to manifest his glory upon the earth. 
as I live. That must become uh, the thought in our, as I live, uh, all the earth uh, shall be filled uh, with the glory of the Lord. Uh, as I live, uh, my workplace uh, shall be filled uh, with the glory of the Lord. As I live uh, in New York City, it shall be filled uh, with the glory of the Lord. Wherever I am, uh, my family, it shall be filled. Uh, that is, the glory of the Lord shall cover everything I come into contact with. As I live, says the Lord. That becomes my declaration. As I live, because I say what is, I'm in agreement with God. Unless you want to disagree with God. Amen. That is to, dis, that is to resist this is to resist God. Satan is resisting this. That's why the scripture says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, who do not what believe, lest the light of the glory of God should shine upon them. It says the God of this world has blinded the minds. He says he has blinded their minds who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, what is that light? Of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Because the glory of Christ is the glory of God. Because Christ is the image of God. Hallelujah. So the enemy is resisting the manifestation of God's glory covering the earth. The mandate of the church uh, is to manifest the glory of God. For the glory of the Lord uh, to cover the earth. God says, as I live, I'm committed to this. Amen. That's why the scripture says in Hosea 6.3, it says, let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established, is as guaranteed as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. That is, as surely as the rain comes, so shall the Lord come. He shall come in his glory when we pursue the knowledge of his glory. Amen. Habakkuk 2 verse 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. That is the chapter that introduced faith unto us. That right division. Make it says the, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. That is God is saying the same thing through different prophets. He said it first through Moses. Here he said it through Habakkuk. He said it through Isaiah. When the seraphim began to declare, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is what? Filled with his glory. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 11. That is, we need to align ourselves with the purpose of God. This is why Christ came. To, he says Christ in us is what? The hope of what? Glory. Christ in us. So how are we sure that we are going to manifest? He says Christ in us is the guarantee. The spirit of Christ in us is the guarantee that there will be a manifestation of glory. It's not by your power. It is not by your might. It is by the spirit of the living God that resides and abides on the inside of us. There it is. To them God will, talking about the Gentiles, to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, among the nations, uh, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. That's why you can easily say greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That there is nothing that can overcome you because the, that is, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Hallelujah. He says, the God that commanded light to shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of the lens of the power can be seen to be of God. And not of, it's not about you. 
that this manifestation of the glory of God is not about you. It is about God. It can be seen. This power, the power that raises the dead, the power that heals the sick, the power that casts out demons, the power that opens the eyes of the blind, the power that raises the crippled man, the power that supplies all your need, it is for the glory of God. Hallelujah. It's for the glory of God. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. That when people see, they'll say, ah, this is the Lord what doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. That see what the Lord has done. It is marvelous in our eyes. Praise God. Because you have made his glory your pursuit. That is, let's get this clear to my mind. That even if you choose to be a single person, it is not so that you can say, I don't need anybody. Ah, I don't want anyone's problems. I'm good all by myself. And it's actually pride and rebellion. If, you, if you're going to be, that is, it must be for what? The glory of God. If that is the path, it's the, the intent is for what? The glory of God. That whatever you do, let it be for the glory of God. Amen. That you're not saying single because someone has injured you and broken your heart in the past. So you're done with all men. Say, so let the purpose be, let it be the glory. That is, let the glory of God be your pursuit. You will know what to do. Amen. Isaiah 11, verse 9 to 12. says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. He's talking about the church. For the earth shall be what? Full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. Can you see this? It's, a, it's, 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 it's consistent. And in that day... There shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be what? Glorious. They are seeking him because his resting place is what? Glorious. That is, they are seeking. His resting place is talking about the church. It shall be glorious. They will come and seek the Lord. They will say, let us go to the mountain of the Lord's house uh, to hear what the Lord has to say to us. It says, in the last days, uh, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and every other hill. That all nations shall what? Flow into it. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is being revealed. Go back to, where were we? Isaiah 11. Shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros and Cush, from Elam and Shina, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. That is, there will be a gathering of God's people. He will set up a banner for the nations and as, will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed, those who have been scattered, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of what? The earth. All this is taking place because the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the, because his glory is being manifested. This gathering is because God says, look, I am manifesting my glory. So the remnants, those who have been scattered, they are going, there, is, there shall be a gathering of the nations unto me. From the four corners of the earth.
We see the same thing in Isaiah 60. I shared this last week. This is the assignment God has given us. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come. What is that light? The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. You are the instrument that God is going to use uh, to cause his glory to spread uh, and cover the earth uh, as the waters covers the sea. So God says, you arise uh, and begin to shine. For your light has come. It comes because you are seeking for it. It comes because you are asking for it. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Amen. But the Lord will arise, this is God's answer to that darkness that is over the people. But the Lord will arise over you. Tell yourself he's talking about me. Unless you don't believe he's talking about you. He, I'll say it for myself. He's talking about me. Amen. The Lord will arise over me and his glory will be seen upon me. That's my confession. The Lord is arising over me and the glory of the Lord is seen upon me. It says the Gentiles shall come to what? Your light. He's talking about this glory. The nation shall come to your light. This glory that is seen upon me. The nations, the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. This is what will begin to happen. They all gather together. They come to you. They come to me. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. That is, they are gathering it, they are gathering it for your sake. When you have chosen to arise and to begin to shine, for the glory of the Lord to be seen upon you, says, when that is happening, what the world is chasing after, what they've gathered, they are gathering it for you. It says, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. Seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. They shall come unto God has said it, so shall it be. Amen. That which God has given unto us, Bible says, it shall come. Hallelujah. This gathering because of the manifestation of God's glory upon you. You are the instrument that God is going to use to spread his glory upon the earth. To spread his glory in your city. To spread his glory in your family. To spread his glory in your workplace. You are not just there to earn a salary. You are there to manifest the glory of God. Don't get it twisted. If you think you are working there just so that at the end of two weeks you can get your paycheck, then you've missed it. You are there, the divine purpose. You are in this place for such a time as this to manifest the glory of God. You are not in this city by mistake. You are not where you are today by error because God does not make mistakes. In fact, even if you make a mistake, God is able to work all things together for your good when you make his glory your focus. Hallelujah. I mean, did David not make error? Killed Uriah, slept with his wife, killed Uriah. That is, he committed adultery, he committed murder. That should bring instant judgment. But he, this was a man after God's heart. That he, he, when the prophet came and told him his sin, he immediately repented. Ha, I've missed God. And began to, that is out of that destructive union came what? Solomon. 
God can, that Jonah said, God can produce a Solomon from your mistake. If you repent of what you have done and seek for his glory. Amen. It's not for you to say, ah, the, the mistakes I've made, there are too many, it's too late. It's never too late with God. When you make his glory your pursuit, there is nothing that is too hard for God to do. It was Solomon that built the temple, not even David. Amen. It was Solomon that built the house of the Lord. Said, it's not going to be you, it's going to be your son, Solomon. Who knows that Solomon wasn't the firstborn? God skipped all the ones like Absalom, Adonijah, all the, do you understand what I'm saying? To get to the one that was born from error. <laughs> do you understand the God we are serving? When you make his glory your pursuit, Matthew chapter 4, from verse 12, says, arise and shine. Your light has come. God has made you a light in this world. Amen. Says, darkness. See, God showed me something a, a while ago. Because a lot of times you see things, and why is all this happening in the world? All this calamity, all this, God said, look, you are seeing darkness. And the reason darkness prevails is because of the absence of light. So, hold yourself responsible. I just want to show you what God has called us to. Hold yourself responsible when darkness prevails in a particular place. That darkness prevailing is because of the absence of light. Darkness on its own has no power unless light is absent. Matthew chapter 4, verse 12 to 17. I want us to see the life of Jesus, how Jesus saw himself. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to what? Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying... The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. That's where he was. You can replace it with where you are right now. The land of New York City. The land of Brooklyn. Long Island. Wherever your, the soles of your feet are treading upon. Amen. So the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. That's where Jesus was. By the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. You see that? Says, arise, shine, for thy light has come. That, your, that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall do what? Come to what? Your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. This is what was said concerning Jesus. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, uh, light has dawned. Some translations say the day has dawned. Let your entry into a particular place be the dawning of a new day in that region. That you shouldn't enter a place and nothing happens. Let your entrance into the city be the dawning of a new day for the people that are there. The people who sat in darkness, uh, had, don't, that is, don't abuse them for sitting in darkness. Be the light that they need to come out of that darkness. Don't say, ah, they're in darkness, they're performing works of darkness. Be the light uh, that will manifest uh, for them to come out of darkness. We should be tired of judging others. Be the light that sets them free from captivity. Said upon those who sat in the region, which means when you see that you are comfortable, they've they, they been doing that for a while. Says upon them, light has dawned. 
Become that light unto your generation. Become the light unto your city. Become the light unto your family. Look, darkness cannot resist light. The Bible says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light does what? The light does what? It shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. John 1, 4, 5. The darkness cannot overpower it. Be that light. We are being created. We are being conformed to the image of Christ. As he was light, so are we unto the world. As I am, so are you unto the world. I am light, so are you. I am the light of the world. It is not being, I am not bragging. It is what is written. So I am declaring it so that it might be fulfilled in my life. I am saying it not from a place of pride, but humility to the word of God. I am the light of the world. I am the light of my city. I am the light of my family. I am the light wherever I am. Amen. It says that light shines in the darkness. The darkness does that is they should be confused. Those who have chosen to remain in that will be confused. That is, did they not try to kill Jesus? They could not until he was ready to lay down his life. That is, they can do no harm to you until, it, it, until God says, okay, it is time to lay down your life. Darkness can, has no power over you. Death has no dominion over you unless it is time to lay down your life. As Paul would say, now it is about time for me to take up this tent. Peter said it too. It's time for me to lay down this tent. They, they knew when it was time to go. But while they were in the world, they manifested the light of God. They manifested the glory of God. Will you be the one that God is going to use to manifest his light and his glory? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the glory of God is at hand. Why? Because it is sin that causes us to fall short of the glory of God. It is sin that takes people into darkness and into death. Hallelujah. The glory of God puts us in the light. That's why Jesus was sent to deliver us from our sins so we could experience the glory of God. And I'll share, I'll share that next week, Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. But what I want you to understand, you are God's instrument. You are the light of the world. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said. I'm going to quote. Let's go to where Jesus, where this scripture was coming from in Isaiah. To show you the effect of the light and the manifestation of the glory of God. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 to 4, it says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the, in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has dawned. Or shined. Amen. You have multiplied. See the effect. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. Amen. They rejoice. What is that joy? They rejoice before you according to the joy of what? Harvest. That is, a harvest takes place when the light of God begins to shine. When the glory of God begins to be revealed. There is a harvest, there is joy as a result of harvest. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Amen. It says, for you have broken the yoke of his burden, that which held him captive. And the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of what? Midian. Now, to know the day of Midian is when Gideon fought with the Midianites. 
and God brought down his number to 300, uh, and he defeated 130,000 soldiers. 300, defeating, that is, Gideon became a light unto Israel to deliver them from the bondage of the Midianites. Do you understand? So there was a joy, that is, they divided the spoil. They were set free. They were free again to serve God. Hallelujah. Because Gideon uh, yielded himself to be a light unto the nation at that time. God is asking us the same question. Are you ready to set the captives free? Are you ready to be a light unto the world? Are you ready to manifest the glory of God, so that the nation can be multiplied, so that there is an increase and a multiplication taking place in our midst. A gathering of the nations. Hallelujah. You can see that the manifestation of his glory is connected to the salvation of men. Hallelujah. Let's continue. John chapter 9, from verse 4 to 7. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I am the light. The light has done. He said, they that dwell in darkness and sitting in the valley of the shadow of death, upon them a light has dawned. He said, they that have sitting there, they have seen a great light. When they see you, can they say they have, that is the light of God has come? Listen to what Jesus said. I must walk the works of him who sent me. Could this way I've said I must manifest the glory of God. That's what I've come to do. I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can walk. He said, as long as I am in the world... I am the light of the world. And because I am the light of the world, it is day. And because it is day, I must walk the works of him who sent me. That is, I must manifest the glory of God. When I am no longer here, the night season has come. Nobody can do anything. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And the next thing that Jesus did, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back what? See. That was the manifestation of God's glory. That was the manifestation of light. Amen. That was the manifestation of light. The manifestation said, your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is seen upon you. So Jesus said, ha, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I must walk the works of him. The works of him. Talking about the glory of God. Being revealed. Being made manifest. Those wondrous works. Those mighty deeds. You are created to perform miracles. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And we shouldn't settle for less. That the Bible says in Isaiah that me and the children that God has given me, we are for what? We are for signs and wonders. We are for signs and wonders upon the earth so that the nations can gather unto Christ. John chapter 2 verse 11 to 12. When Jesus did his first miracle, turning water into wine. But I want to, to see the conclusion of that event. Hallelujah. Let's see. It says, here I am, and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of what? Hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. We are for signs and wonders in the land from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Don't cut yourself short. Declare who God has called you to be. I am a sign and wonder upon the earth. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. As long as I am in the world, I am the light. That is, my life matters because I am the light of the world. Amen. John chapter 2 verse 11. 
after Jesus had turned water into wine. You know, Jesus, the man said, hey, whatever he tells you to do, do. He said, woman, why are you troubling me? This is, it is not yet time to begin to manifest. But he did it. And in verse 11, the scripture says, this beginning of what? Signs. Another word for signs is wonders or miracles. This beginning of what? Signs. Uh, Jesus did. I must work the works of him who sent me. Jesus did in Cana of what? Galilee. Those who are in Galilee by the sea. Upon them a light has dawned. Amen. Upon them a light has dawned. They that were sitting in darkness have seen a great light. Says this he did in Cana of Galilee and did what? Manifested what? His glory. And his disciples believed in him. He mani- that glory that he manifested was the glory of God. The glory that God had given him. What God gives you is yours. What is yours is his. What is his is yours. Amen. That's why we are one. Said the Father is in me and I am in the Father. What he has is mine. What I have is his. That's what that means. The Father is in me and I'm in him. What he has is mine. What I have is his. We are one. Said he manifested his glory. Her eyes shine for thy light has come. The glory of the Lord. That is God wants you to manifest his glory through you. That's what I want you to understand. That is why whatever you do, as simple as eating and drinking, let it be for what? The manifestation of the glory of God. That's why Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the manifestation of the glory of God. Therefore, he didn't go immediately. He heard from God. He didn't go immediately. He waited four days. Because what God wanted to manifest was his glory. And it wasn't just in the dimension of healing, but in the dimension of what? Resurrection power. I said this last week. If Jesus had gone ahead to heal him, he would have been in disobedience to the voice of God. Even though healing is good, do you understand? He would have been in disobedience. That is, people would have seen that, ah, they would have said, hey, God is good. Ah, he healed that guy. He was so sick. But that would have been what? Disobedience to God. Because God wanted to, that he would have been doing it for his glory and not for the glory of God. That is easy to see. People sit there, ah, wow, powerful. Hey, that was powerful. But all all that happened was for your glory. It wasn't the glory of God. That is, we must come to a consciousness where you are saying, I must decrease. He must increase. I must die and he must live through me. That Christ is the one that is living through me for the manifestation of the glory of God. That is my purpose, to manifest the glory of God in whatever I'm doing, in whatever I'm saying, my desire is for the glory of God to be revealed. I don't just want to talk about it. I want to what? See it. I don't just want to, I will declare it, I will proclaim his glory, but I want to, he said, if you believe, you shall do what? See the glory of God. I want to see the glory of God in the lives manifested in the lives of those around me. Those who are sitting in darkness. Those who are in the valley of the shadow of death. Those who are sick. Those who have been bound by the enemy. I want to see the glory of God manifested in their lives. Hallelujah. That is, if they are hungry, I want to see the glory of God manifested in their life. That is, from five loaves and two fishes, I will feed the 5,000. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14. What does the scripture say? So that you're not confused, that it's not just Jesus. It says, you are the light of the world. Amen. Remember, Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Then he, the next thing he did was to heal somebody. He said, I must walk the works of him who sent me. I want you to understand what it means to, be, to declare I am the light of the world. It means that you have been sent to do. Jesus says, as you sent me, Father, so have I sent them. He says, I am the light of the world. I must walk the works of him who sent me. I put this upon you that we must walk the works of God who sent us. 
We must manifest the glory of God. That is why it says we all with unveiled face are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We want to be, we are transformed to the same image. We are transformed to that image so that we can manifest it by the spirit of God. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill, uh, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. If you are the light of the world, you cannot be hidden in darkness. You must stand out. You are the light of the world. It says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. If you are under a basket, arise and shine for thy light has come. But you put it upon a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in that house. It gives light to all who are in that city. It gives light to all who are in that family. It gives light to all who are in that workplace. It gives light to all who are in that nation. Let your light so shine before men. So that they may see what? Your good works. The same way Jesus said, I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is there. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see the works of God. They can see the glory of God. And because of the manifestation of God's glory, they begin to give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. You see the assignment. Do we see the assignment? What you have been created for. It says we have been created for his glory. To manifest and to demonstrate it upon the earth. Everything that I am, Everything I possess is to manifest the glory of God. Whatever skill, whatever, that is, I lay everything down just to be used for his glory. That is, God, I just want to be used for your glory. That whatever I am, spirit, soul, and body, let it be your will, not my will. Let it be for your promotion, not mine. Let it be for, the Bible talks about the fame of Jesus spread. Let it be for the, for the spreading of the knowledge of Christ. Uh, for his fame, not my fame. Amen. Let it be for the glory of God. Philippians 2 verse 14 says, Do all things without complaining and disputing. Philippians 2 verse 14. Do all things, in Corinthians it says, do all things for the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> then that says, here Paul is saying, do all things without complaining. Because you're going to go through things that you, the temptation is to complain. Why am I going through this? Or someone will do something to you that you want to complain about. Or someone will say something that you want to argue about to prove your point. If you are going to do all things for the glory of God, you cannot afford to be arguing and complaining. The Bible says, Who's, God showed me this in the middle of the week. He says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. That is, if you are offering praise, that is, if you are going to glorify God, you are offering praise, the sacrifice of your lips, uh, the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of your lips, giving thanks unto God. The converse is the same. If you are complaining, you are not glorifying God. Just think about it. Anytime you find yourself in a state where you are complaining about what you are going through, you are not, that's why the Bible says, in all things, do what? Give thanks. At all times, in all seasons. It didn't say whether the season was good or bad. It says, in all things, you give God thanks. Why? Because when you give God thanks, in spite of what you are going through, you are glorifying God. When you glorify God, God will glorify you. That is, you are giving him thanks because in the midst of what you are going through, what you want to see is the glory of God. What you want to see manifested, that is Lazarus, could, that is, Lazarus was dead for four days. Jesus came. It were complaints that his sisters were giving. That Jesus, if you had been here, it was subtle. They were throwing shade. Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's what they said. They were complaining that you came, you came late. If you had come when we called you, he would not have what? Died. They were complaining softly. We love you, Jesus. But if you hadn't been here, my brother would not have died. 
says, do all things. It is, it is a big temptation to complain. When your day is not going well, you want to complain about it. When your boss has been nasty, you want to complain about it. When your co-worker has been rude, you want, do you understand? It's that it is a natural thing to want to complain. When someone says something you don't like that irks you, you want to argue, you want to complain. says, look, if you are pursuing the glory of God, if you are going to do all things for the glory of God, it says, do all things without complaining and disputing. That when someone wants to get you into an argument, just let it go. Do you understand? When they want to rope you, you know people, they are people, they just want to rope you in, into a conflict, into an argument. For the sake of argument, it has no end. I don't know how many of you have been in that kind of situation. They just want to argue for the sake of arguing. He said, do all things for the glory of God. Do all things without complaining and disputing. Because a lot of times when you are disputing, all you have entered into is strife and contention. That's all that has happened. And when that happens, then the enemy has taken you captive, the Bible says, to do his will. That's why it says, pursue peace with all men. Not because they won't do things that annoy you, but because you are pursuing what? The glory of God. That what you want to see manifested, even in the life of the person that has annoyed you, is the manifestation of God's glory. Because it's not about you, it's about God. Not my will, not my profit, but that which is to the benefit and the profit of others. Hallelujah. That's why Paul would say, we that live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Christ can be manifested in our mortal body. We're talking about the manifestation of his glory. Amen. It says, do all things for, without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. That is, this is the environment. You are in a crooked and perverse generation, but I charge you to do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. Among whom you do what? Shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life. That is, the glory of God shall be made manifest. I arise and I shine, my light has come. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I must walk the works of him who sent me. I am bringing those who sit in darkness uh, and in the valley of the shadow of death out of darkness uh, into light. That is, they don't drag me into their darkness. I drag them into the light. Amen. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ uh, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Amen. I want us to see from the perspective of Paul, again, in Acts. Acts chapter 13. I want you to see what happened from verse 44 to 49. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. That shall be our portion in Jesus' name. That is the image that God keeps giving me. Amen. And I'm holding fast onto it. I remember I was preaching one day and I just saw it. It said, the whole city was at the door where Jesus was preaching. Amen. So I'm prophesying now. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying it boldly. Not being moved by what I see. Hallelujah. Because all things that were made were made by what? The word of God. It's not power or might, it is by the spirit of God. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. I am speaking miracle-producing words in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He said, on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together. That is the vision we are seeing from the scriptures. The whole city gathering unto what? Amen. To hear the word of God. That shall be the case of this 
this house in the mighty name of Jesus, that the whole city shall gather into this place to hear the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because God's glory shall be revealed in this place. God's glory shall be manifested in this place. We arise and we begin to shine. We cannot be hidden anymore. Hallelujah. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hidden. That we are no longer in obscurity. The time of our manifestation has come. Oh. And what are we manifesting? Jesus manifested the glory of God. says, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blasphemy. So don't be surprised when multitudes come and then people begin to say nonsense. Do you understand? It is not for you to get angry. I'm preparing us for what is to come. Hallelujah. So don't get angry when they begin to say nonsense. They begin to say all kinds of things. says, when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. They did that to Jesus as well. When they saw the crowd coming to Jesus, they began to say all kinds of things to accuse Jesus. It's the same pattern that the enemy has. It is not for you to say, ah, can't you see all the glorious things I'm doing? Why would you say that? It will come. That persecution will come. So be prepared. Do not be shocked. Do not be dismayed. says they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, talking about the Jews, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Verse 47 says, For so the Lord has commanded us. Listen to the command. I have set you as a light unto the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. I have set you as a light unto the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Salvation takes place as a result of the manifestation of that light. The manifestation of God's glory will bring salvation to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the city, to everyone in your family, to everyone in your workplace. There is no limit to the salvation of God. When you recognize, I am a light unto the nations, I am a light to my co-workers. I am a light to my city. I am a light to my family. Amen. You will be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 48. says, now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to it, you see salvation taking place. Because he recognized he was a light unto them. As many as had been appointed to eternal life believe. As many as are appointed to eternal life in this city, they shall believe. They shall come forth. They shall come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 49. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. The word of the Lord was being spread. Look, where you are the light, you have been sent to spread the word. Amen. Was being spread throughout all the region. It wasn't limited to where they were. Praise the Lord. Let's see where Paul got this from. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 42, verse 5 to 9. And we'll soon round up. Isaiah 42, verse 5 to 9 says, Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirits to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep him. That song said you will not, you will not let your hand to fall. Amen. That's what we were singing. 
that he will not let his hand fall from yours. Praise the Lord. It says, I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant unto the people and as a light to the Gentiles or to the nations. Verse 7, see the effect. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. So those who are in darkness are actually in prison. It's a spiritual prison. It says, but you are a light unto them uh, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, uh, those who sit in darkness uh, from the prison house. Praise the Lord. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. He's giving it to you. Nor my praise to carved images. That you are the one I have assigned with this glory of mine. To open the eyes of the blind. To bring out the prisoners from the prison house. Those who are sitting in darkness. Manifest my glory. Manifest my glory. Let's look at Isaiah 49. He says, behold, the former things have come to pass. New things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. When you make God's glory your pursuit, God will tell you new things. Do you get that? It says, when you make his glory your aim, your focus, he says, I, new things uh, I declare. Former things have come to pass. New things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. That is, you will enter into the prophetic. Amen. That is, we'll be operating in a prophetic dimension because the glory of God is our focus. Hallelujah. That is, it doesn't matter what need you have in life. When we come together to pray, no matter what anybody's need or situation is, when we make the glory of God our focus, God will meet every need. It says, I will supply all your need according to what? His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 49, verse 5 to 6, he says it this way. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him. Starts the gathering again. So that Israel is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. Do you see that? I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord because he has put his glory upon me. It says, you shall call a nation you don't know and nations that don't know you shall come to you because God has what? Glorified you. It says, and my God shall be my strength. Verse 6. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of J Jacob and to, reserve, to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. That you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Why? Because we have chosen to be the light of God unto the Gentiles, unto the nations. To open the eyes of the blind. To set the captives free. Amen. That is, when we seek the glory of God, that is why it is those who see God's glory that he anoints with his spirit and power. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free, to proclaim liberty, to open the prison. It's the same thing. To open the prison doors. Hallelujah. We'll end with Acts chapter 26 and 1 Peter chapter 2. Again, I want you to see what Paul was going through. Verse 16, he says, But rise and stand on your feet. This, he, was, he was telling King Agrippa his encounter with Jesus on the way to Damascus. Remember, Paul, formerly known as Saul, was a murderer. He was persecuting the church and killing people. Then Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus whom you are what? persecuting. 
Then Jesus said, look, I've called you now to do certain things. He says, but arise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. He sent him to the Gentiles to open their eyes in order to turn them from what? Darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So the power of Satan operates in the dark. The power of God operates in the light. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Verse 19. Very powerful. It says, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What is that heavenly vision? That you are a light unto the nations. That is the heavenly vision. That you are a light unto the nations. That you are meant to manifest the glory of. That is the heavenly vision. Said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. It is the same heavenly vision we all have. It is the same heavenly vision Jesus demonstrated upon the earth. It is the same heavenly vision Peter demonstrated. That Paul said, look, I am the light of the world. Praise the God. I am the light of the world. That God has given me as a light unto the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring them out of darkness into light, to deliver them from the power of Satan to the power of God. He said, this is the heavenly vision. This is the vision God has given us. Amen. He said, you know what is the vision for this church? This is it. Hallelujah. He said, I'm writing this vision. I'm making it plain so that everyone that is reading it, you do what? You run with begin to run with this heavenly vision. You will not run in vain. Amen. This is the race that God has given us. This is the heavenly vision. Hallelujah. I will end with 1 Peter. Chapter 2, verse 9. So that you know who you are. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, priests were servants, a holy nation, a nation whom God has separated unto himself, his own special people. You know, and he said, this is my special person. He said, we are his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him. And those praises is talking about the excellencies, the virtues, the wondrous works of God, the glory of God. You can proclaim his glory. The praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called you out of darkness to abide in his glory and to manifest his glory all the days of your lives. It says, as long as I live, I decree and declare that the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. The signs, the wonders, the manifestation of his glory. I am God's instrument on the earth to deliver men out of darkness into his light. Out of the power of Satan into the power of God. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. You cannot begin this journey as the light if you do not know the Lord your God. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you are listening under the sound of my voice and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the scripture says, Christ in me is the hope I have for glory. That this glory cannot be manifested without Christ. I cannot be the light of the world if Christ does not abide in me. So if you know you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to surrender all to him today, just declare this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come unto you today in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and my trespasses. Cleanse me in my spirit, soul, and body. 
with the blood of Jesus Christ. Purge my conscience of dead works so that I can serve you, the living God. Wash me, O Lord, with the pure water of your word and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live and to serve you in righteousness and in holiness all the days of my life. I declare in the name of Jesus that from this day forward, I am free from the law of sin and death. I am free from sickness and disease. And I am free from the power of Satan. I have obtained a glorious inheritance in Christ Jesus. I declare that my spirit, soul, and body belongs to you. All that I am and all that I possess belongs to you. I surrender and present myself unto you, a living sacrifice. I give you thanks for all that you have and all that you are also belongs to me. And we have become one in Christ Jesus. Fill me day by day with your Holy Spirit and manifest your glory in me and through me. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare that I am born again, born of the incorruptible seed of God's word, born of the Holy Spirit. I proclaim that I arise and I shine, for my light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. The glory of the Lord henceforth is seen upon me in the mighty name. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. My ears have heard, and I have seen what the Lord has done. What we've been waiting for will come to pass. See what. See what the Lord has done. Come on, sing that. Come on and see what. What we've been waiting for has come to pass. See what the Lord, oh, see what the Lord has done. Oh. We see through the eyes of faith. We see in the spirit what we've been waiting for has come to pass. We will see it. We will see it. Oh, oh one more time. Say, see what. We see what you will do. You'll sit, write the vision, and make it plain. What we've been waiting for will come to pass. We will see what the Lord has done. Oh, see what he's done. See what the Lord has done. See what he will do. See what the Lord has done. Welcome to the Covenant Nation, New York City. We are an assembly of people who proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and King over our lives. And we daily labor to manifest his glory. Amen. Through the words that we speak and the deeds that we do by the power of his spirit. Amen. Our purpose is to manifest his glory. To see his glory manifested in every area of our lives. Today's service was transmitted live on all our platforms on Facebook and YouTube.
you at the Covenant Nation NYC. So you have another opportunity to watch the service on all our platforms and to share the links with others. Amen. You can spread the word. The word was spread, so it didn't spread automatically. People are the ones spreading it. Amen. I don't hear a very loud amen. amen. Praise God. Yes, I'm going to start calling on angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Because angels still spread the word. I hope you know. Hallelujah. In fact, angels are being released to spread the word in Jesus' name. Amen. I release that word. Amen. Our midweek services continue on Thursday at 7 p.m. Also on all our platforms on Facebook and YouTube at the Covenant Nation NYC. I started a series last week, Thursday, titled... What is the first thing? Titled Silence. And yes, I, that's the title. That's not the title of the message. The God of Increase. Amen. So I'm going to continue from that point. The God of Increase. Our daily prayers continue twice daily at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. except on Sundays at 9 p.m. So I don't need to tell you what we're going to be praying about. Cool? The Bible says the words they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So what we have heard, we are talking about it, but actually seeing God's glory being demonstrated in our lives and in this church that will bring the whole city to our doorstep. Amen. Hallelujah. So join us daily for prayer. Focus is the glory of God. Amen. Next week's Saturday, March 30th, we have our monthly night video from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Praise the Lord. Good. Are you not excited to pray? Me, I'm excited to pray because I already know what my prayers will be. There are not many things. I've always said it. David says there's only one thing have I desired. Do you understand? When you discover that one desire that will answer all the other desires, he says the kingdom of God is as a man who found a great pearl, sold everything to acquire it. Do you understand? That pearl is like the glory of God. It will answer every other thing. Praise the Lord. And so, he shall make us glad in his house of prayer. That's what he says. He says, we shall have joy in the house of prayer when we make his glory our priority. Amen. So, uh, so join us next week, Saturday at 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. for that time of prayer. Um, and later on that same day at 9 a.m., we have our weekly verse-by-verse -verse Bible study called The Unveiled Word. So we are going to continue in the book of John. We are currently about to start John chapter 18. I don't know if I test you, so you failed your exam. So John chapter 18. Praise the Lord. Next week, Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, or some people call it Easter Sunday where we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And you see, it is linked to what I've been sharing. What I'm going to share next week, all this, what I've said since last week, is linked to the purpose of his resurrection. It's for the manifestation of God's glory. Praise the Lord. So, invite someone to come and partake of God's glory as we celebrate his resurrection. Bring someone with you. Amen. Hallelujah. I think we're going to have two, two families that want to dedicate their babies. They watch online, so they want to come and do it in person. Praise the Lord. So we're going to have two babies. Well, one is not a baby so much anymore. A young toddler and a baby. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's just come together to celebrate his resurrection. His resurrection is your resurrection. Amen. He did it so that you can, con that you can live that resurrected life each and every day. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us just bring our tithes and offerings, what you have purposed in your hearts to give. Bring it as a sacrifice unto the Lord to honor him with your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. He says God will supply. He will cause your bars to be filled with plenty and your, your, your vats to overflow with new wine. Hallelujah. So whatever you've decided to give, you give cheerfully, not under compulsion. This is not compulsion, not under compulsion, but God loves you it with delight. You are doing it with gratitude. Amen. And so whatever you purpose to give, give via Zelle, 
to the Covenant Nation NYC at gmail.com. So that's the Covenant Nation NYC at gmail.com. Amen. So let's just declare this over our tithes and offerings. Our God, you make all grace to abound towards us. Therefore, we always have an all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us seed to sow bountifully and bread without scarcity for food. Continue to supply and multiply the seeds we sow and increase the fruits of our righteousness. You supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. We are partakers of the riches of your mercy and grace. Therefore, we cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. And so we are anxious for nothing. We declare that as we bring our tithes and offerings unto you today, the windows of heaven are continually opened over us such that we do not have enough room to receive all the blessings that you are pouring out upon us. We give you thanks for the overflow of your blessings upon us. You have rebuked the devourer for our sakes. Therefore, Satan has no access unto us, our families, the work of our hands, or the fruit of our labor. We decree that no weapon that is fashioned against us shall prosper. For you, O God, are our refuge and fortress. And therefore, none can stand against us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's just share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Have a gloriously filled week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. I call you holy. You are so holy too. I call you holy. you righteous your name is righteous you are so righteous too i call you righteous righteous you are yeah 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 call you all that i call you all that your name is all that you are so all that too Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.